Alas, my lord, I may not fight with you. Sickness and age doth wither up my limbs. Yet I will watch the fray. Nay, nay, come, my lord. We will bestow you in some better place. Lord Talbot, do not so dishonor me. Here will I sit before the walls of Orleans and will be partner to your weal and woe. Courageous Bedford, let us now persuade you. Not to be gone from hence. For once I read that stout Pendragon in his litter, sick, came to the field and vanquished his foes. Methinks I should revive our soldiers' hearts because I ever found them as myself. Then be it so. Heavens keep old Bedford safe. have seen our enemies all thrown. Such is the history of all ambition. Now up, now down. How happy then am I to die at such an hour of England's glory. Old Bedford, close thine eyes, take thy rest. Now God, receive my spent and weary spirit. Look still with love upon my king and brother and grant that they may live in such a quiet as Bedford hath not found but by his death. Please it all, Luxon, several petitions. These lords will proffer to your majesty. See how this boy doth lean upon the duke. But I have here a perilous petition. Shall bait my lord protector's pride and all. And please you all, who must we answer first? The Earl of Warwick, lord of close the presence. Accept this scroll, most gracious sovereign, which in the right of Richard Plantagenet we do exhibit to your majesty. What? Shall Plantagenet be hired? Peace, Somerset and Mark his majesty. Well urged, my lord of Warwick. For sweet prince, you have great reason to do Richard right. For those occasions, I told your grace. On those occasions, uncle, were a force. Therefore, my loving lords, our pleasure is that Richard be restored to his blood. Then let not any private malice here against the Duke of York be henceforth shown. Well, come, sirs, who is the next petitioner? Last year, it is myself. Well, let me read it. Then take it, sir, in truth of that concerned you. Comes thou with deep premeditated lines, with written slander, studiously devised, presumptuous prelate? If thou canst accuse or aught intends to lay upon my charge, do it without invention, openly. Sir, stint thy rage. This place commands my patience, or thou shouldst find thou hast dishonored me. Say, should I so? Then what should I find here? Thou hast dishonored me in this vile paper. What is it I that do abuse my power? 
Oh, Beaufort, such is thy audacious wickedness, thy lewd, pestiferous, and licentious pranks, as very infants prattle of thy pride. I'm reverend, Gloucester. Thou art reverend, touching thy spiritual function, not thy life. Rome shall remedy this. Rome, thither then. My lords, it were your duty to forbear. Because of Gloucester and of Winchester, the special watchman of our English wheel, I would prevail, if prayers might prevail, to join your hearts in love and amity. Believe me, lords, my tender years can tell Civil dissension is a viperous worm that gnaws the bowels of the Commonwealth. Pray, Uncle Gloucester, mitigate this strife. Yield, my Lord Protector. Good brother, yield. He shall submit, or I will never yield. Compassion on the King commands me, to Behold, my Lord of Winchester, the Duke hath banished moody discontented fury. Why look you still so stern and tragical? Here, yeah, Winchester, I offer thee my hand. For shame, my Lord of Winchester, relent. Well, Duke of Gloucester, I will yield to thee. Love for thy love, and hand for hand I give. O oh, loving uncles, Winchester and Gloucester, how joyful am I made by this contract. Would all dissents might be as soon resolved. Amen. Amen. Please it, your grace, to look upon a means whereby they may. Most willingly, my lord. Beseech you then, descend the throne, and at the council board I broach it straight. The will please you to come down. With all my heart. So it does please the rest. Your Majesty, please let each man take his place. So, Uncle, you sit upon my right, and you upon my left, my Lord of Winchester. For you shall be my chiefest counsellors. So, so. Then speak, my Lord Protector, and I will honour what thou dost propose. Then for the first, to let me acquit myself of that which Beaufort charges me withal, since he avows that I abuse the power pertaining to my great protectorship, how may I better make disproof of this than by foregoing a moiety thereof? That should in sooth approve thy innocence. Yet I will do it with all willingness if you, my lords, approve my purposes. That is, to achieve some practical proceeding to check that canker emulation which doth deface our flower of government. For I do fear there's others in this presence merit reproach as much as I or both of Well, sir, your remedy. And then thus it is. When we are met upon some troubled question, let us resolve it by our general voice. And when the matter hath been given vent, let the opinion of the greater part be straight upheld, and those that are outvoiced yield their intents unto the general. In faith, it is a pleasing policy. And for my part, I gladly cleave to it. What says your majesty? Do you approve this with all my heart, if it contents the rest? Trust me, it does. What think you, sir, sir? I like it well. And so do I, my lord. Then nothing lacks but Winchester's consent. What say you, brother? If Gloucester doth propose of his mere will to abrogate some part of Gloucester's power, I render thanks to God and do approve it. And then one thing more. Let every man remember he gives his voice not on his own behalf, but on the king's. And what of that, my lord? If it should chance at some unlooked for time that what we do propose mislikes his highness, then should we yield to his opinion. Alas, that I should have so great a voice. The better sort you, uncle, must advise me. My lord, you must not make my staff your crutch, but rather so assert your sovereign will as best accordeth with your conscience. But I have read in many holy books, self-will is sin and much displeaseth heaven. A subject's vice may be a sovereign's virtue. How think you we have kept the French in awe? Why, by our courage. Aye, and by their weakness, who have been ruled by such a kind of king as thou wouldst make thyself. You are too bold to speak so roundly to your sovereign. Nay, Winchester, he chideth me from love, from love to England and to myself. Now here comes the post of tidings out of France. What news from hence? Orleans is tame, my lords. That's the best tidings. Well, sir, what's the worst? The Duke of Bedford's dead. My brother dead. Alas, my lord, since my sweet father died, I never heard such heavy news as this. Faith, my lord, we all do mourn for him. I'll mourn anon. This hour is all unmeet. For now the French will triumph in his death, and we must look for present remedy, for which it best befits your majesty to cross the seas and to be crowned there. The presence of a king engenders love amongst his subjects and his loyal friends as it disanimates the enemy. And since brave Talbot craveth further aid, let's reinforce him with our chiefest soldiers. Let Somerset and Warwick, with young York, cross all with us with all the power they may. When Gloucester says the word, King Henry goes. But do the rest to prove my purposes. I dare be sworn our minds are one in 
this. In this and all things under heaven's grace. Then we go forth together, brotherly. Our ships already are in readiness. Aye, we may march in England or in France, not seeing what is likely to ensue. This late dissension grown betwixt the peers burns under fainted ashes of forged love and will at last break out into a flame. As festered members rot but by degree till bones and flesh and sinews fall away, so will this base and envious discord breed. And now I fear that fatal prophecy that Henry, born at Monmouth, should win all. Henry, born at Windsor, lose all. Which is so plain that Exeter doth wish his days may finish. Ere that hapless time. 